This video is going to be a follow-up to my previous video, which was on using character level styling in the Fusion page of Resolve 17. I was about how do you do the animation of the character level styling, so you can animate the individual characters. But in that video, I basically did all the animation of the characters at the same time, so that, say, all the letters were coming on or off the screen uh, at the same instance. And in this video, I'm going to be kind of a part two, which I will show you how to animate the different characters at different times. And here's a uh, example of what we're going to be doing. So here are the different letters, the word resolve, all come in at different times. So they're coming in as pairs from different parts of the screen there, off from the left and the right. But that is different than doing them all come on or off at the same time. It's basically the same steps, but there are some things you're going to be kind of aware of. So I will start off with a new timeline here. The same footage. Now I'm going to add an adjustment clip. Now still with the most recent version of Resolve, you kind of still have to do this extra step when you're using adjustment clips in your projects, is that you want to drag it to the timeline first, but you don't want to use it from here. Because if you come here and switch to the Fusion page, you'll see that the keyframes are showing up as different than they don't start at zero and just go zero to 149. They're starting here at 108,000. That's because of the frame rate I have. And if you look back at the timeline here, it's because it's starting off at a different time. So it's still kind of a flaw with adjustment clips and resolve and hopefully they'll fix it maybe in resolve 18. Right now to go over there and fix that problem, you just drag a copy to your media pool, delete the one on the timeline, and then drag it from the media pool. And now this adjustment clip is ready to be used. So if I pop over to Fusion again, you'll see that it goes from zero to 149 because it's five seconds long. And you can adjust it to whatever length you want. I'm gonna just use that. So I'm gonna switch over to the Fusion page. And I'll just readjust my node editor here. Give me a little more room. I'm gonna add a text plus node. And that's where the uh, character level styling will be done in the text plus node, like in the previous video. So we'll put that into the first viewer here by hitting one on the keyboard. I'll come over to the inspector and type in the text. So I'm going to type in resolve. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger here by going down to size, bring it up a little bit more. That should be about okay for now. All right, so we're going to do the character level styling here. We're first going to make the, we're going to be starting the animation kind of at the end because all the letters are going to be in the center to begin with. So we're going to start off from frame 119. We're going to just go down this box here, hit enter, and that's where the playhead will be. So it's at frame 119. Then we'll come over here to the inspector and right click in the text box. Choose character level styling. We'll switch over to the modifiers tab. Now we're going to highlight all the characters. Now we're going to highlight all the characters. So they're all selected here. And we're going to turn on and make sure that the show text outline always is enabled. You can turn it off and turn it on. And you notice later on that actually the letters, when you animate them, the outline will stay in the center as well as these selection boxes. Uh, I'm not sure if it's really designed to do that, but that's how it works. So that's kind of one of the things that's confusing, but we'll be able to work around that. So it's not really going to be that big of a deal, but we'll just make sure all these characters are selected. And then we're going to choose, you could right click here in the inspector to enable the animation, but we just also just left click on the dime here to enable keyframing. We're going to switch over to the shading tab. And the two different things we're going to be animating is the position and rotation. Now, to go along with the video before, on the first frame that you want to start animating, you can't just create the keyframe. You actually have to change the parameters, and you can change them back, but you have to change them in some way. And then that way, the, it will interpolate between the different keyframes, so you'll see a smooth animation. So we're going to be changing the angle Z. So I'll just move that temporarily here and send it back to zero because at the end, that's what it's going to be. And then for pivot, now for the rotation of these letters, right now they're going to rotate from the bottom, 
but I want them to rotate more from the center. So we're going to go up to pivot and change the Y coordinate here, or Y value to 0.2. Hit enter. And we're not going to be animating that parameter, but that just going to, is going to keep the rotation in the center. And then we're going to go off to offset, and we're going to be changing offset X. So we just want to change that, and then change it right back. We just double click on it, change it to zero. Okay, now we're ready to start the animation. So we have them all selected. So right now they're all going to end here. So we want to go, I'm going to be doing this in pairs, like in the example. So the outside letters first will rotate off, and then the next ones, and so on until the O. So we're going to go 30 frames forward, which is frame 89. And then we're going to select first the R just by drag selecting here. Make sure you just have the R. Now we're going to do the angle Z. So have it rotate off to the left. We actually want to go positive with the rotation angle. So we're going to make that 360 so it does one full rotation. I'll make sure it's 360. Okay, so one full rotation. Then we're going to take the offset X and move that R totally off the side of the screen here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the E. So we'll drag select to make sure just the E is selected. This time we're going to make the angle negative 360. So it rotates in the opposite direction off. And then we're going to take the offset X for that and move it off. And as you can see, as we select each different letter, these will reset because they each have their own set of parameters for each letter. So we got those first two. And then if you actually want to preview what it does, we can just drag through here. And you'll see the two letters roll on. So we'll go back to there. Now we want to go 30 frames earlier. So we go 59. And we're going to just repeat the same thing. Go to the E. Make sure just the E is selected. Go to angle Z. Make that 360. Take the offset X and move it off screen. Then do the same thing for the V. And just want to make your, your precise and just getting the letter you want. You want to make this negative 360. Right double click on it, and then you have 360, enter, and then do the same thing with the offset. Go we go to the right, and then we can test that by moving the playhead here. And we can see the letters rotate on coming from off screen. So now we want to go to 29, and we'll do it with the letter S, angle to 360. And offset off the screen do the L and now since this is really skinny gotta be really careful but you just got the one selected so that's gonna be negative 360 and move it off to the right and then we just have one letter to go but we'll test this real quick so you see they're all coming on so now we just have to go back to the beginning and we'll take care of the O and we'll move that off to the left We'll select it, do 360, it's offset, and move it off to the left. And that's all there is to it. So now we can play it through, and the O will come on, rotate on, and the other layers follow. And that's basically all there is to it. And I go back into the edit page, start at the beginning, play it through. And all the characters will animate on and at different times. So again, one of the keys is just that when you're doing the first animation, once you've gone to have any of these selected, oh, come here to text. Have any letters selected, all of them selected. And as you can see here, they stay in the center. The outline and these boxes never move off. But you're able to, to work around that anyway. If you come over modifiers, you always just want to make sure that the first time you do the keyframe, first spot that you enable the keyframing, that any parameters you want to affect an animation, you want to make sure you do at least a, a change of some sort, and then you can always bring it back to their zero point, to their default. You just want to make sure that's put in there so then it'll animate smoothly between the different keyframes. And here we're able to animate them different pairs at different times. And if you actually come and look at the spline and enable it you'll see the different keyframes even though it's all just one slope here you could go in and change 
if you like select any of these points, you can go in and change the timing a little bit. But there's uh, another way to kind of go about doing that if you want to do different timings, sort of, for the uh, different letters, or if you want to do different effects, and you want to animate them as well, but you don't want to use this kind of same timing. Uh, in the next video, I will show you how to uh, deal with that. But hopefully you found this video useful, and I thank you for watching.